Hi everybody, this is Chris Petrie. We're going to do some drawing today. Um, drawing skills are um, something you just work on 10-15 minutes every day. And if you put in those uh, time slots of 10 to 15 minutes every day, once a day, your drawing skills, you, you won't believe how much progress you'll make. So, um, watercolor uh, artists, 95% of the time when you're seeing watercolor artists, they're always going to be professionals people that do it for a hobby, YouTubers. If you always see watercolor artists always do their pencil drawing first. Even if it's a quick sketch, they always either sketch something in or they do their or they do a drawing first usually 90% of the time. So that's what we have to work on. We definitely have to work on drawing skills. This is how we do it. I took this from my sketchbook here, so I'm using this drawing which is a local um uh, it looks like a local business here that's right around from where I live, around the um, corner, down the, down the street a little ways. And uh, it's got interesting windows and a stucco wall here and some stonework on the bottom of the wall. An interesting little doorway here and uh, side, uh, side entrance over here with some stairs and there's another building back here. Maybe we'll simplify it a little bit. Maybe we won't, we won't do this over here, the, this back area maybe. Maybe we'll just keep it this building for the most part in the side entrance here with the stairs and um, you know this way we don't get too uh, you know this might take an hour or two we'll try to keep it to maybe 45 minutes to an hour and we'll just do the main building here and the sidewalk and the light post and some of the roadway here and, and uh, these details and uh, so but again 10-15 minutes a day you always have your sketchbook you leave one in the car for if you go visit to friends or family and you, and you bring it in and if there's some conversations going on with politics and you get frustrated and you don't want to really get involved you just grab your sketchbook and say oh I'm, I'm going to draw something and you just take your sketchbook and pencil or pen and do some drawings while everyone else is arguing about politics or whatever and then uh, you'll be getting your 15 or 20 minutes in so I want everyone to get your time in so it doesn't matter what you have to do 15 20 minutes every day you got your sketchbook you have one of these at home one in the car Maybe if you visit a lot with family members or so forth, you can maybe even leave one at their place so that you always have it there too as well with some pens and an eraser. That's all you really need. And, you know, you're all set. So this is my sketchbook. I I did some... Uh, so this is cool. This is uh, my... Uh, this is our local uh, auto service um, shop here. So this is right down the street from where I live. So I did a drawing of this back in 2015. And it looks quite interesting. It's got the light posts and the, the auto shop here, Maple Autos, and uh, the trees and the communications and the power lines and things. So this one was fun to do. This one is a local Dunkin' Donuts down the street. This was a parade, Memorial Day, uh, 2015. So this one's more three-dimensional, a little more trying to get some um, perspective going, some three-dimensional qualities to this. And then, you know, I would just usually grab a pen and start drawing anything, everything. Try to get my time in. There's just some interesting Sharpie marker drawings. And I even did some watercolor stuff too. And there's some more buildings I did. So these are kind of, did a boat here too. And this was a local um, Dunkin' Donuts where it overlooks a uh, car dealership and an interesting uh, bridge here, uh, like a highway with a bridge. Some cool, interesting concrete uh, bridge work here. And uh, so, you know, this is really fun to do. You, I, you know, got a, got a donut and some coffee, sat in my car, locked the doors, and then took my sketch pad and had fun doing sketching. This is my local dentist's office. There's another Dunkin' Donuts, and there's a house across the way. A car. I try to do some cars. Car, cars are always difficult to draw, so I try to practice those a lot. And it's a local mall in the area. And did some more local train station. So you can see, I, I was kind of always just grabbing the pen, pencil, and drawing. These were some early like sketches of some faces and skulls and interesting stuff like that. 
pencil drawings here, just some fun free. Here's some fun shading. This is my sister and brother-in-law's uh, local pool. So that's the pool house with the um, little small uh, luncheonette in there and so forth. That's kind of a sharp, I uh, used uh, maybe a china marker with this. So this is more of like a china marker type sketch. <clears throat> Get some beautiful washes of shading in the sky and the darks and the So these are always fun using the China markers. And uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, again, some more. This is um, by my house across the street. So I did a, a drawing with a China marker for across the street. And then, wow, look at some cars here we did. Cars are always difficult to draw, but I, I was practicing these at one time a lot. And you can kind of see here, not too bad. I was practicing them a lot, and if I tried to do these now, it would be a little more tough for me, because when you practice something a lot, you definitely get into the into the feel of things, the curves, the lines. You start to, um, you just get in tune with things that you draw. So if you're drawing cars all the time, and years back I was practicing them a lot because uh, they give me such a hard time, I was getting kind of a good feel for them. This is nice, three-dimensional here, and then just two dimensions here. So if you if you just if you never drew cars before, you would want to start out with this type of um, drawing here, where you're going to do the um, two-dimensional drawing, like so, and then you start working uh, the angles eventually. You know, after you get the feel for the the curves and the shapes of the car, and maybe the tires. You know, then you so lots of fun. All right, let's get started now. Hopefully that was not boring. <laughs> it's uh, just fun looking at sketches and brings me back <clears throat> to when I was practicing a lot with my drawing. And oh, so here, this is a pen drawing, but I did sketch it first with my pencil. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's, maybe I will. I'll use the same pen that I used to always use, a Uniball Vision Elite fine point pen. These are nice. They have a cap, so you can put these in your pockets, and they're not going to explode and, and cause problems with ink in your pockets and things like that. They have a nice tight cap. Again, these are um, Uniball Vision Elite, and this is a fine point pen, so we'll do that. Now, to do the... I'm going to do the... Um, border first. So I'm going to do the border. You can use a ruler, of course. So I can take this ruler and let's see. I can do that. Let's do this up here first. So we'll do the ruler up here first. Then we'll go across to there. And that looks about the same. And then we'll go this way. And I'll try to just get a rough estimate about there. And then like this. Okay, so we have a, a rectangle, then we start looking at it and say, well, let's, let's make it easy for ourselves. Let's use a pencil first to do this. Let, yeah, let's use a pencil and just get the, the approximate, so about two-thirds of the way across or one-third this way. So if we broke our paper down into thirds, one-third one-thirds, two-thirds, and three-thirds, or one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds, the first third is where the building line is, about here. So that's all. We, we'll just get our building line over here, approximately there, really lightly. Hopefully you can see that. I'm just getting a really light sketch here, though. This is what you want to do before you start. And the building, the bottom of the building is where the grass and the bushes are, and the bottom of the building is up quite a bit. And we could just transfer it right over to here. We could say there's the bottom of the building. Let's transfer it right over to there, right to here. So that's the bottom of the building here, like so. So I just make a light pencil line. We're going to do this in pen. Then I'm going to say over here is the, the uh, eave of the roof here. And then from there, it 
goes up on an angle. So we have the angle there. And then the angle comes back down over here like that. So I'm just putting the angle of the roof over here. I just put that there, pretty simple. Here again is the uh, gutters along the eaves of the roof, and that's right here. And then there's a, a line that goes across here, so I'm just going to go across like that. You can use a ruler if you'd like. And that will be the siding, clapboard siding, which is up here. And this is all stucco here with the windows and the doors and so forth. So we're going to just kind of leave that for now. And uh, let's see the. We can again transfer our lines over. This is something where if you do work um, with sketching or even watercolor painting and you're working with maybe a book or a photograph, things like that, you can, if you can transfer some lines over, it's easier to do it that way. So that's why I'm, I'm doing this. I'm transferring lines just straight across because we're basically right at the same level. So it's almost like we took the same exact size paper put a new piece of paper here and now we're just going to recreate this over here. So that's why I can take these lines, transfer them over and say, okay, that's the top of the stonework there. This over here is the window, approximate window over here, and the doorway over here, entrance door to the building here. And then there's a sidewalk here, like this. And then there's the, um, and if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. Here's the window over here. So I'll make the window over here quickly. And then I'm going to make that roof over here, the shed roof on the side of the house, like that. And then we're just going to make a post there. And then this stonework here is where the steps are. So we have a post there. And then we're going to draw this again with the um, with the pen. We just try to get some pencil lines in quick, just so we have an idea here. And then maybe we'll just do the steps straight down like this. Like that. OK, we have it. Light pencil sketch, just to get a feel for where things are and now we're going to do the pen on top of this, the pen drawing. With our, uh, any black pen works fine, fine point, you can use a medium point. You can mix it up and try different pens at the same time. You can do this all in pencil. And you can pretty much though, we are going to go for the pen, the pen look, the pen drawing look. So we'll get these fine details in here. Okay, let's take a quick break. Um, we did a lot of work so far. We got our layout of our rectangle here mimicking this. And then we got a light pencil sketch in where uh, we got the, the basic game plan of where everything's going to be in the rectangle. And we just basically copied it from here to here. And again, we just made our notes, you know, thirds, one third, two thirds, and three thirds. This line of the building here is two, one, one third over this way. And then we just transferred our lines over this way because it was easy to do that because we're actually using the same size paper. And, and when you do that, when you have something you're copying, same exact size, you can just basically transfer it over. You could trace it if you wanted to with a light table or a piece of plexiglass with a light underneath it. And uh, let's uh, take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll start our pen, pen drawing. All right, our pencil sketch is now completed. Just a quick outline of where everything is on this drawing. We have that complete. We're gonna go in and we're gonna do our pen drawing now. So here, we can just have fun and start in one place, any place you want, and just we'll start drawing through the, we'll do more of a contour drawing. Contour drawing is essentially, if you really wanna look at it simplistically, contour drawing is just when you start in one place in your drawing and you just continue your drawing and all of your lines and curves and and uh, you continue through the drawing working your way from one section into the next using each section as your guide 
um, as to the um, shape and size of things and the scale of things. So if you can imagine, if you stay in one area of your pencil drawing like this, and then we start doing the stairs over here. Like so. We can work from here. Now if we didn't do, we actually created this very, very light pencil line first. So that gives us we can just basically trace over those lines. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm actually just tracing over these lines. But if you just wanted to start drawing and you didn't want to do a light sketch first, you would kind of stay close like this. You would stay close to where you start and work your way out from there. So if I started here, you know, I might do some, there's some bushes here. So I might, I might stay over here by the bushes. Like this. Then I might come over here and, and start to do my stonework. And uh, I might make the stonework a little different this go around here. I might make it a little more dynamic, let's say. There's a sign here, so I'm going to do the sign. So I'll do the sign here. There's some, it looks, you know, a little bit of three dimensional quality to it. And we're just going to keep working our way through. And these kind of look like bricks, almost large size bricks. It's stone, so this is actually stonework. And this stonework is all the way over here. That. Like so. So you can kind of see how I'm trying to stay close over here. I haven't gone too far. I mean, you know, you keep you keep as close as you want to your starting point as as you feel you need to. And again, if you There's some bushes over here, so I'm just going to capture those like so. And then the post here, so we'll make a po top of the post there, maybe a little trim up there. And then there's the post here. And then in the far distance over here, there's some railings. And you can continue without lifting your your pen. That's a good way to remember contour drawing is you're really not lifting your pencil really too much or your pen when you're drawing you're kind of trying to keep everything let's see how how long I can continue my my lines here as I go so I'm gonna go across here sometimes you will lift your pen or pencil when you're contour drawing but we, c we can get quite a bit of a so this is going to be a shutter and another shutter here. And this will be the window panes here. And there's the window pane there, the sash. And then we'll do, it looks like there's three. So I'm just having fun here. I'm trying to keep all my Window panes looking good, squares here, like so. Doesn't have to be perfect again. And then maybe we'll go back in and we'll, once we're done drawing, we'll put in some uh, some shadows and interesting uh, 
darks and you know to sp kind of spice up the, the drawing a little bit. These glass panes on these windows are dark. They were looking very dark in, in when I was there sketching years ago when I sketched this scene. So I'm going to continue to do the same thing. Maybe I'll just do I'll do it right now. I'll put in those darks in here. There we go. And I didn't fill it in all, you know, all exact. Like, I didn't make every pane of each of these, you know, all these window panes here, these panes of glass. I didn't make them all the same, like, fill them all in. You can kind of see that I, let me zoom in a little. There we go. You know, I left some white. Uh, bits of uh, white paper on the glass here and there just to give it a little bit of and then maybe I'll we're doing the uh, shutters now the shutters have three there we go all right so we're actually moving along pretty good here um, let's continue. Uh, let's see over here. We have the roof. There's some shingles on the roof there. And uh, maybe there's uh, maybe there's a railing here, a handrail. And a doorknob over here. And then maybe a light. Let's make a light over here. So we just make little indications of things that are going to look interesting. So we'll do a light over here on this side. Like that. Okay, so we've stuck to our game plan of kind of staying over here where we started and not going all the way too far. Let's. Let's go over here now, maybe do a little of the trim on the uh, gable of the roof here. So we have that trim there, like so. Then there's a window here. So let's do our window shutters there first. Window and then another shutter. Then we can do the sash here on the window up top and then we can do our we'll do our squares here, our window panes, the glass of the windows. So I just counted them up and said one, two, three, one, two, three. Top half and then the bottom half the same thing. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then I'll do some shading under here. Okay, and this is the same shutters down below as up here. It has three panels within the shutter itself, three raised panels like that on each side. And again, we're not going for perfection. We just kind of get it close to what we're seeing over here, one, two, and three. So we got the three raised panels on these uh, shutters. We have the um, window panes looking good. We followed the same window um, patterns here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six over six, we would call that. One, two, three, four, five, six over six. Top slash six panes of glass or six um, grills 
a grill pattern of six and then the same on the bottom. And all the windows follow that same pattern. Okay, and then we're going to do another smaller window up here. Like that. That's substantially smaller. And we'll put the sash right in the middle, like that. And then we're going to do the same thing. Here I'm going to just do dark. Um, squares. I'm just going to kind of color in some dark squares to try to draw the squares on this window since this window is really quite a bit smaller than this one and, and this one. I'm just going to color in some dark boxes or squares like that. Much easier than trying to draw squares themselves. I just fill it in. And this one's a little different. This is the shutters are um, Kind of like standard shutters that you might see, like that. All right, you can kind of see we're really making good uh, progress here. We have quite a bit of details already in this, and um, we've been working about 12 minutes. Let's work a little more, and then we'll take a break. Um, let's maybe uh, let's do some s the clapboards. The clapboard siding that is across here. You can use a ruler. If you want, you can use a ruler here on this. If you want, you can actually measure out the you can measure out the um, distances between each of the boards so that they look even, or you can do it by eye. Maybe you can do a couple with the ruler and a couple with uh, freehand. Maybe we just do a couple like that. A couple with the ruler. And then maybe a couple freehand, that might look good. And I wouldn't make maybe, I might stop and go with lines. I might not make every line exact. Does that make sense? Sometimes that looks good if you can kind of make some light lines and then some darker lines. I guess var variety is really good with watercolor and with drawing too as well. If you're doing pen drawings, if you can kind of keep that um, thought in mind, you're looking for variety, a couple, a couple of lines with the ruler, a couple lines freehand, a couple dark lines like this, a couple lighter lines, maybe some areas where the lines are missing, so you might not see every line perfectly straight. That's how it is in, in real life. Um, Sometimes there's light hitting this wall and it obscures maybe some of the lines. So if you leave some dashed lines there, that looks good. And we did our trim over here. And then maybe some trim there. And I think we're coming along nicely. I would say now's a good time we'll take a break. Why not, right? I'm going to take a break, um, sit down for a few minutes. I think I wanted to um, actually uh, check a couple YouTube videos um, uh, on the news. So I'm going to go look at the news for five or ten minutes, take a break, relax, and then I'm going to come back. I hope you'll do the same, or if you have an errand to do, or if you have to do some laundry or some dishes, or if you want to grab something to eat. It's always good to kind of break up your work. Uh, when you're doing uh, drawing and watercolor painting, you'll always hear me say I'm taking breaks, and I really do take breaks. Sometimes I might say I'm taking a break, and then I just start back up again in like five minutes. But I do also sometimes do chores, you know, some laundry, some, you know, I'll, I'll get something to eat maybe for 20 minutes, a cup of coffee. I make a cup of coffee by the time I'm get that done. And, you know, it's 15, 20 minutes, you know, and so, you know, but again, um, do take breaks if you can, please remember. And if you feel your concentration levels, le levels are great and fantastic and, you know, then don't worry about it. You can keep working. Um, but I do like to take breaks. I think uh, my concentration level goes after about 15 or 20 minutes. So, um, all right, I'm going to come right back in, in a second. And I always mention too, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're just, so, if this is your first time here, thanks so much for coming by and I welcome you to my channel if you, this is your first time here. And um, I really appreciate that you're here, um, following along with us, working with all of us together here on my channel. We have thousands of people tuning in every weekend, doing drawings, paintings. We paint every 
watercolors. We do drawings. We do ink and wash paintings. We do every type of subject matter, boats, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes. We do uh, figure painting. We do pretty much uh, everything, still life. So we uh, cover all your watercolor um, style um, tutorials here on my channel, and I'm hoping you're going to keep coming back. And if you, there's right on the right-hand side, there's the button down there for subscribe. All that means is you'll have me saved in your YouTube channel, and this way the next time you open up YouTube in a week or two, whenever the next time it, it is you do come on to YouTube again, you'll just see my videos there. If I've, I usually make a, at least one or two videos every week, sometimes three or four, but um, in any case, you'll see my videos in your queue when you open YouTube so you don't lose me, because sometimes it's hard to find somebody if you like a video, you like my video, and if you don't subscribe, down below on the right hand side if you forget to do that you might have a hard time going back and finding me there is also a um, history button that you have on your uh, YouTube channel you can find me that way too if you happen to not subscribe you just hit history and you can find me in your history um, over the last couple weeks usually you'll see videos that you've watched over a, a couple weeks time or so okay I'll be right back and uh, thanks again for uh, watching and we'll, we're gonna finish up this drawing I think in the next 15 20 minutes we'll have everything completed and we'll also um, have a fun time we'll get our China marker out or maybe we'll do some pencil I'm trying to think what I used here I think I did use some pencil on this so maybe we'll use pencil I'm trying to think what I did here if I use some China marker yeah I think I used some China marker on this so maybe we'll use some China marker And I also use pencil too, so maybe we'll use some pencils to, to shade some of the areas. So we'll give it some shading. And, um, and you'll see it's really going to come all together in about the next 15 or 20 minutes. So stick with us here and we'll be right back. Okay, so we are back in business here. Let's get started. We said we're going to finish up our drawing and then we'll do some shading and we're going to use a china marker and a um, 6B um, pencil. Any pencil will work, an office pencil, anything like that. You know, if you have an office pencil, these work great for shading. So you can shade, you can shade uh, with an office pencil just as good. A 6B might be a little softer. Usually these are a little harder lead, so, but it still works fantastic, you know. So let's get started now. We're going to So let's say the distance is back over here and there's a garage back here, but we're not going to draw that. We said we're going to kind of leave this area over here. Just uh we're not going to do any work back behind this uh steps and porch here. Just because we're on a video here you can always develop that a little more if you wanted to, to put something back there, a building if you want. You can kind of see how that looks back here. There's a car and some garage doors. And uh, I minimized it if we can look here. So you can kind of see back here. There's a, a, a car, a couple garage doors, and everything is smaller. And you can build three-dimensional uh, feel to your paintings and your drawings by just remembering if you're going to put something in the background over here, you're just going to make it smaller. It's, everything's going to look smaller, so the, the windows will be a lot smaller. Uh, the garage door, there's two garage doors here. They're very much smaller, right? Like so, if you have a window over here this size, if you had a window over here on another building you were going to draw, like let's say you're just having a creative fun time and you're going to put a building back here like another house, you would just remember that to give it the feeling of depth and three-dimensional quality, if you made windows on this house back here, they would be very much smaller than these windows because these are much closer to us. So that's all we have to remember is if you're going to put things in the distance, just shrink them down, make them look smaller, and you'll have a, a, a good looking, it'll, it'll read correctly when you look at it. It doesn't have to be perfectly exact. If you have um, a, a picture you're working from or a uh, magazine or outdoors if you're drawing something you'll have that to use as a guide but if you just wanted to have a fun time creating your own house or something in the background here you'd just make it a lot smaller that's all you just shrink it down as much as you want you know so we'll zoom back in again here because we're really going to stick with that there the stairs the porch here and that's what we have right over here the stairs and the porch 
the window we have that completed so now we're going to start working over here so now over here we're going to do this this is a um, entrance uh, foyer for this building and there's a roof on top of there like so a flat roof and uh, some trim on there so you're just going to see me I'm just going to do some trim on that and then uh, there's we can go right across like so then there's a um, window over here so this is basically a door with two side lights on it they we call these side lights in construction in architecture we call this uh, side lights over here on the sides so these would be the side lights of the door and they have windows in them and this is the door here so I'm just gonna carefully draw the door in here you can kinda see I'm just gonna do a contour drawing and then there's some uh, there's some uh, trim on the door so we're looking at some trim here like that there's some trim on the door makes it look interesting then there's a handle here like that and then there's three by three lights like that so I'm just looking at this and saying how many windows do how many panes of glass do I see in this pa panel of windows here and I, I notice that there's one two three one two three one two three that's basically thirds one third two thirds three thirds and then the same thing over here there's one line and two lines making it one two and three and then once I have that drawn in with my pen then that's all I have to do is just go in and we always know when we're doing windows if the light's coming from above, which it, most times it is, the sun is, you know, comes up from the sky, middle of the day, it's straight up overhead of us, and then the sun sets and it sets in the horizon. So usually you're going to see shadows here and there on the windows, usually underneath the tops of the windows here. You'll see a darker shadow line here, all the way across, like that. And then another one here because there's a sash here which sticks out. It protrudes out the sash. So you would see a shadow under there like that. Same here. There wouldn't be any. It'd be dark underneath the sash here for a little bit like that. Same thing. Well, here this is just all glass. And look at that. We've already got quite a bit of our drawing and shading in so then there's a window on top of this too over here and there's a shutter there and the window here and then over here there's a there's a tree or a bush over here on the side so I'm just gonna do some of those kind of squiggly lines for the bushes and tree over here next to this area and this is the same thing thirds the shutters have those panels three panels like that one two and three and then we have the window and the window is the same as to the left over here so we have Three and three. One, two, three. One, two, and three. And then another cross like that there. And then we have the dark area here under the sash. And then we can just add a little bit of pen in there. That's the other sash there. So I'm just carefully, you know, you know, not not carefully. I guess you know I'm carefully kind of getting these darks in there, but you can kind of see that I'm not getting overly, you know, 
caught up with every bit of detail on that. Like I'm not trying to make perfect squares in here. As long as I shade in and you get the general idea of the, the window panes and the amount of window panes which are correct. One, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three. Same thing, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then you have the sash in the center of the two. There's two sashes and there you see the division of the two sashes with that white uh, wooden sash, bottom of the top sash there on the window. I'm getting a little bit in the details of um, the windows and how they're looking and how they're kind of, I'm breaking it down a little bit, but you don't have to get in that much detail. We're just kind of remembering to get the, quant the, the quantities correct. So if we, if we were to, let's see if I have some scrap paper here. Just so we kind of, when we're drawing these windows, we're just kind of getting the, the idea of capturing what we're seeing. So they're sort of rectangular like this, and then they're divided in half one time. And then there's and then there's another line here. They follow the same pattern like that. So it's three and three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then you just, you keep looking. There might be some changes, like there is a change. The window on the door here, the, the glass glazings or panes on this door here are a little different. Those are only three. So that changes a little bit, but all the windows follow this pattern right here. Three and three. So a six over six for the grills, if we call these grills of the window, six over six. Kind of a good thing to remember. Maybe when you're doing, um, I'm kind of out of, out of the camera there, sorry about that. Um, so when you're thinking about windows on any of your drawings, you know, you can kind of just remember, it would be easy to just say, okay, there's six and six, six over six, and that would be a six over six. I got that a little bit off center. Let's do, I'm gonna try to do this a little better now. Divide that in half, divide that in half, like that, and that's the sash in between, the bottom sash, let's say. And then one, two, and three, and then one, two, and three. So that's six over six. You could have a window that has more uh, gr uh, grills. So you might have a um, th one, two, three, and one, two, three. 9 over 9 for your window. So you might have a 9 over 9 like that. So you have, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then the bottom of the top sash or the top window there. And then your next glazings, your next uh, panes, window panes, and those are the same thing, 9. And this can be helpful if you take a quick couple notes on this and you might, when you're looking at your architecture, if you're doing drawings of buildings or you're drawing um, houses, if you like to draw houses and, and buildings, a lot of people like to do cityscapes and homes and interesting things like this, you know, kind of like those uh, urban sketches, you know, you can just do a quick note to yourself when you're out there in the field and you're saying, oh, I'm drawing this building, what's the pattern on the windows? And this way you kind of, if you jot this down, on a little piece of paper or even in the margins of your, you know, you might just say uh, like uh, all, all windows are um, six over six, like that. And this way when we're doing all these windows, we always know the pattern's gonna be six over six. Six panes of glass, six panes of glass with the division in the middle. Good thing to remember, it'll keep everything looking true to the actual architecture that you're uh, a drawing here. I know I went into the weeds a little bit on that one, but that note, but if you do, if you can remember to maybe jot down that little bit of a note of the window grills and how they are looking, because you might have multiple different window um, styles. And so you, you know, you might uh, make a little note on your paper with pencil and just 
say 6, 6, and then this one might be 9, 9 over here. And then when you're done drawing, you can just erase those lines with an eraser. And this way you will get, you will get the right amount of um, uh, grills and, and window panes in your windows as you're going through your painting and uh, your drawing and your painting. All right, so here we're gonna, these are three. We have three panes here. They sort of are following along here like so, like that. And we'll do the same thing. We're gonna fill in these with some dark darks here with the pen. that and there might be a shadow under here a little bit and under here like that all right so we have I think everything is looking let's do our light let's do our light post in our tree I think that's what we have left here so let's um, we have a little bit of a little bit of um, some grass over here we can do that some grass and then there's the sidewalk and then we have uh, the curb line here maybe maybe some grass and then the curb line and we'll just make it freehand if you want to do it if you want to use a ruler too that's fine and then we're just going to go like this and make this like so. And then maybe here it starts to straighten out the sidewalk like that. Okay, so we just put a little bit of lines on the sidewalk here. Maybe this is the center where you're going to see the the line in the sidewalk straight like this vertical and then as we go this way with the sidewalk you're going to start to see these kind of slope or angle out this way which just gives us a little more that gives us a little more uh, three-dimensional quality then what we'll do is we're going to um, we're going to put our light here our light post it, it's about here so I'm looking over here Maybe I'll start up here. And then I'm just going to come straight down like this. You can use a ruler again if you want. And I'm just going to do the light post here. And if, if you have to, sometimes if you make an awkward looking line, you can always take some white, white tape, white out tape. This works good if you're doing pencil and pen drawings. And then I'll just make this bottom portion of the, the light, the base of the light a little smaller. I think I made it too wide on the right hand side there. And then I can fill in even to a little bit here, make this darker. On one side, maybe I'll make it darker, like that. And then we have our light. Looks good. Put the little. Uh, candles in there. This was around Christmas time, so there was some bows and I th there were some bows on there I think or some lights maybe or a wreath, but we'll just leave it plain right now. And then we'll oh, let's do this tree over here too. And then this tree is over here on the 
in between the sidewalk and the street and it's sort of right in between where the and I'm just going to carefully draw the tree like so just I'll get the straight line there and then I'm just going to go up and do some some branches and twigs and things like that. Nothing too fancy. Keep it real simple. Like that. And we'll shade that in with some pencil or some china marker and we just do a little I think that is good. All right, let's take one more break. We did work quite a bit here on the various sections of the uh, paint uh, drawing. So we've done a lot of work. We did some really fine work here with the lamp and the tree and this um, foyer area with a door to the uh, entrance to the building. So we have done a lot here. Let's um, take a break. And we'll come right back in, in a minute or two, five or ten minutes, and we'll do some shading. We'll use our China marker and our pencil, and we'll do some shading to finish up. But I think you're going to really enjoy this finishing process. We're going to do the shading, and uh, you'll see how it really uh, comes all together, looking really good with some beautiful medium tones on here. So we have mostly darks and bright white of the paper. Now we're going to get those medium tones in. It's going to look really good. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, let's get started. We're going to do some shading here, China marker. It's got the uh, string for peeling, to peel off the... Uh, Tape, uh, the uh, paper, and then we also have an office pencil here, just a number two HB. Let's get started here. I think I'll start with the China marker, maybe. I think that's what I did over here. So we're going to do the shutters are a little darker. They might have been painted like, I think they were like a blue, like a uh, medium blue, like a cerulean blue almost. So we can do that. And this one here too. So remember, you're having fun now. This is the final step in the uh, process. We're going to do the shutters in a medium tonal value. Like that. With our china marker. Looks good. Let's... Uh, do some darker darks under here on the bushes. So uh, the uh, weeds and bushes and things here along the stonework on the base of the building, the uh, sunlight is hitting the tops of the bushes, so you're going to see more, of le more or less some shadowing underneath here, like so. So let's do that. Let's get a little bit of the shadowing here on the base of the uh, bushes along this area. And... That looks pretty good. And again, we're having fun enjoying this. If you were going to do this for like, if you were going to make a gallery, like if you wanted to put this into a show or a gallery or something, or, you know, you might, you might work out these details a little more um, carefully with the light uh, where the bushes are here. But I think this is pretty, looks pretty good. We just have that rim light going across. That looks kind of good. Like so, and then over here, same thing. The bush over here is a little darker at the base. And then as it gets up higher, it's a little bit lighter. And then uh, there's some shadows over here. And there's some shadows along the bottom of this siding here. So there's clap clapboard siding up here.
There's a, a bit of shadow underneath where the clapboard siding starts, like this, and this is some stucco. So we can do a little bit of some specks, uh, you know, spots. You could take your, um, do some tapping, just to make little tiny um, dots on this to give it that stucco feel, of stucco cement kind of a feel, like that. And then uh, this is actually a little bit of some shading on the siding here. Let's do that. And you can kind of see I'm using, I'm holding the, the um, China marker really lightly and then just kind of lightly just, you know, swishing it across the paper. No need to get really too fancy with this and or, or to get too tight. Let's keep ourselves loose here. You're just trying to get some a little bit of shading on there. It's a little bit darker than the stucco over here. This is white. This is stucco that was painted probably, so it's painted a really bright white color. So the siding is maybe like a little bit of a tan color or an off-white color or a beige kind of color like that. So we capture that and then we have the stonework over here and then the stonework we can sort of do each stone differently so this is where you can capture more of that stone feel by doing each stone separately and you do one stone maybe vertical and then one horizontally the, the uh, shading and that gives you kind of the feel. Then you do maybe some circular patterns here and there. And that will kind of give you the variety that you would like to see with your stones here along the base of the... So I'll do some cross hatching vertically like this, some horizontal cross hatching, some circular motions. And this way it kind of looks like it's always changing and looking good like that. Maybe I'll take my pen and just make some lines over here. Like so. Maybe there's some shadowing under here, like so, that you could make. So you can make some shadowing here and there. And there's some grass over here. We could sh sh shade in that grass area like that. The stairs over here have a little bit of shadowing. And I think these stairs do have So we could use the pencil even here too if we want to get a little more fine lines. So I'm leaving the tops of the stairs white where that thin line is. Like so. Like that. And then we can just do some, some lines just to have for the sign over there. And uh, what else do we have here? Maybe a little shadowing here under the trim on both sides. And I think we're really coming to a completion here. We have our shadowing in. We have our shadowing complete. We might need a little shadow here along the roadway. So this is maybe where the curb is. And then we have some grass here.
so we can kind of make the curb curb area a little darker. And then we have the street too. So we can do the street. Maybe we can use the pencil again. And just get a little bit of color in there, a little bit of uh, tone, tonal value in there for the street, for the uh, pavement. So this is the street where the cars are. Right now there's no cars there, but that's the street right here we're filling in. And then we have some more area here too. This is like a parking lot. So we can do that. And I think that's perfect. I hope you've had a great time. We've completed this beautiful drawing and it didn't take us too long. We carefully went through the process and I'm hoping even if it did take us, you know, about an hour, give or take, the key is to sort of get the process we're using, you know, I'm, sh I'm showing like a, my process of doing things. Sometimes you're going to change your process a little bit. The way you feel is more natural for you. So you're the artist. You can kind of adjust your techniques, your methods, your processes of how you draw and uh, complete a scene like this. But I kind of just gave the simple format that I usually use also for watercolor paintings, which is, you know, you get that first super light sketch in there just to get everything like a silhouette of what you're doing onto your rectangle, your, your picture frame area. And we had this right next to us, so this was really kind of simple. We just transitioned this right over to this. You can kind of see how that really kind of works real nicely because it's the same size and everything. And then uh, when you do that, once you have that, then you go in and you start doing your dark darks with your pen and your we're, we're, of course, we sh showed the contour drawing technique of just starting in one place and going around through the, taking a trip, you know, we kind of call that a trip through the picture, a trip through the uh, drawing, and you kind of stay close and you work out your subject matter in close proximity so that you can kind of get the feel for things and how they're um, looking as far as the scale of large and small. So... And you just keep working your drawing, your contour drawing out until you pretty much have everything in. And then once we had our drawing in with our pen, then we came in with our pencil and china marker, number two office pencil and china marker, and we got our uh, shading done. And the shading really, doesn't that make it look good? It really does, doesn't it? That's so nice to have the shading in there. Uh, just the, just the, Pen, pen lines looks good too. I have to admit that that does look good. If you if you didn't do any shading, it still looks really good. Pen drawings. There's something about pen drawings that looks really great. But even if you can come in and do some shading, even better yet, because it really does. And it's great too, because if you're going to be painting in watercolor, which I'm I'm hoping you're going to do, um, and I hope you're following my watercolor paintings as I work on YouTube. This helps you to understand the different variations of light and dark in your paintings. So if you do shadowing when you're doing your pencil drawings, then when you go into paint, uh, you know, at a different time when you're, when you're using watercolor paper, this is just regular drawing paper, but if you're using watercolor paper and you're going to do a watercolor painting, you can do the same method, the same process of your drawing, your light sketch first, preliminary sketch, then you go in and do your contour drawing except you're using a pencil and not a pen, and then you'll be looking at it as, oh, where's the light and darks in this painting or this picture that you're looking at, this scene? And you'll be used to doing your light and darks and shading when you're doing your pencil drawings all by themselves like this in your, in your book. So you have your sketchbook with you. You bring, you know, you have two or three of these. You purchase two or three of these at the art store, the big box uh, hobby stores, you know, that are everywhere. You get two or three of these on sale. They're sometimes very inexpensive. They make smaller ones too. So you have these. And I'm going to zoom out, and you have these, two or three of them, and you just start, page one, start filling it up. Anywhere you go, try to bring it in. Maybe if you're going to have some uh, lunch or dinner or breakfast with a friend, bring a sketchbook with you and say, hey, do you mind if I just do a quick sketch? And you can sit there and do some ketchup bottles and salt and pepper shakers and you have a good time. Most times our friends don't care. They're like, sure, go ahead, you know, that's fine, that's... You know, so all is good. Okay, so let's uh, meet up again very soon, and we'll do more drawings, of course. 
Um, I think I'm going to start incorporating more drawings in my videos. Let me know if you want to see more drawings um, like this, pen drawings, pencil drawings, similar to this type of format for my tutorials if you like these. Let me know. I'll do more of these because I, I think everyone always wants to work on their drawings, including myself. I need to work on my drawings constantly, and um, I still have sketchbooks that I work in. And, um, you know, you can have some real fun. This is a cool couch I did just recently. Or actually, this was in 2016. I thought I, it was... But this is pretty cool. So you can just sit there and do, like, a couch or a couple chairs, a couple uh, chase chairs there, like that. And have a fun time. You, I shaded everything with light and shadow. Like that. So you can take your pencil and go in and shade things. You can draw the couch first. You can zoom in. So I kind of zoomed in in this picture just on a couple of the, just maybe one chair and another half of another chair. Got the drawing in. And then uh, you can start shading in things with a pencil or the china marker. You can have some fun. Okay. All right. We'll see you on the next video. Happy painting, everybody, and enjoy the journey. See you soon.